What an asshole. <laughs> My bad. I have to. Hey, you fuck. You you fuck me up with that. And then you try to have your voice a little deep with Michael's chop chop. Man, I'm putting this. I'm putting this at the beginning of the episode. Man, you did it to yourself. You did it to yourself. I, I was like, let me fuck him up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool man. Whatever. You know what? You know what? Just for that, I'm getting. I was, you know, I was talking about what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it now. Oh yeah, you did it to yourself. You did it to yourself. <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> It's all good. It's all, all good. Right. All right. Cool, cool. So you ready to get started? Everything is working good. It's recording. We good to go. You ready? Yeah, we're good. All right. Okay. Five, four, three, two. If you're looking for a show that has formal interviews with few things you can relate to, then this show isn't for you. This is the On The Air podcast starring you, the OTAP show. What does OTAP stand for? Well, we kind of just told you. These are informal interviews with people from all walks of life, talking about experiences you can relate to. Share in all of the laughs with real stories from real people. Find the show on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Android users can listen on the free Podcast Republic app. Now, get ready for this week's episode. Here's the OTAP Show with your host, Corey. What up, what up, what up, everybody? It's your boy Smooth Orga, aka Real Ghost Fight. Hey, this is Nikita, aka Jakari Star. Yo, what's good? This is your boy Bob. And this is Kaya, aka Black Honey. Hey, folks, this is Corey, the host for Metal for Brains. Hey, girl, uh, she's so big. This is Greg, the infamous New Age like Turner. Kicking it with the whole Corey, aka The Real City. Now, you're listening to On the Air Podcast. And you're listening to the On the Air Podcast. The On the Air Podcast. The On the Air Podcast. This is Starry You. Starry You. Starry You. Welcome to another episode of the OTAP Show this week. Actually, my guest this week needs no introduction. Um, her her recipes have been uh, have been shown everywhere. Ebony, uh, food porn daily, uh, cakes and high heels. You were even mm. on Doctor Oz, right? Were you on Doctor? I Oz? was on Doctor Oz. I sure was. Like you was like so. He, so... he ate chicken. He ate my chicken. Okay. We in- yeah, we had a very intimate moment. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, that's what's up so this week we have well wait you know what is it cool to call you a celebrity chef i you know i'm not okay here's here's what it is i am not a celebrity chef i am a chef that cooks for celebrities so what's the, what's the difference? i don't know i guess d- depending i don't know i guess depending on your dyslexia whichever you want to call it um <laughs> you know what fuck it we'll just Yes, I'll bask in that title. <laughs> celebrity so, chef. So this week we have celebrity chef Risha. Put Hi. that in your marquee. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Thanks for doing the show. Little the of little course. known fact. Little known fact. You were supposed to be the very first guest of the show. We talked about it last night, and it kind of worked out that you weren't, Mm -hmm. because you still made the trip. I still did. I'm still here. (laughs) I'm happy to be here. See that? That's what's happening. We're going to have fun today. If we hadn't already started, we're going to have fun today. Oh, of course. Let's let's get it on. Let's do this shit. So, Risha, you you recently changed your name. You you recently went from Kanye Breast, which was which was genius, and to <laughs> at Chef Risha, which is also genius. What was the reason? The reason, um, okay. So when I first got on Twitter, I was actually before I knew how to use it. And I was at work, so I was using, like, my name, my actual name. 
and people from my job started following me and I didn't like that. Um, so I changed, <laughs> I changed it. I was like, let me, I got to figure out something. I changed it to Miss Risha. Um, and then they were still finding me some way. Uh, and then one of my friends, his name is Leon. His at is listen to Leon. He mm-hmm. used to call me like Kanye Brass way back in the day before, before Twitter, um, even before like, well, I think it was like around the MySpace era. Um, he was calling me that. He used to call me Kanye Breast, the Tribe Called Breast, Busty Rhymes, all types of shit. <laughs> so <laughs> I was just like, let me just go by Kanye Breast and lock my account. So that's what I did. And, you know, it was it was cute for the several years that I've had it or whatever. But, you know, I am a, there's a lot of opportunities coming my way and you know, it's just a little bit more professional to go by my actual name and what, you know, my profession is. I am a chef, so it's Chef Risha. When I get hired for stuff, they don't call me, hey, Kanye Breast, can you, you know, <laughs> flip these steaks over? It's Chef Risha, we need you on the stove. So, you know, that's that's pretty much why I changed it. And um, Twitter, you know, went ahead and gave your girl the blue check. So we in there now. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hold on, hold on. Mm-hmm. wait, 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 hold on, wait, 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 when? <laughs> Actually, it, it happened recently, um, I think it was about a week ago, maybe? Hold on, wait, maybe. I've, I have been, let me, I have been on your page, hold on. Hold yeah, on. I got the- They did! I got the, oh, shit! Yes, So yes. you got like, you got like the special blue check mentions now. <laughs> I do. And you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I think there's only, I've only seen like a few perks from it. I mean, obviously it helps when you're working with different brands and, you know, different companies and things like that. They know that you're legitimately who you are. Mm-hmm. We'll see what happens down the line. But I think a lot of people don't know that I've changed my name. So, you know, there's there's people still hopping in my mentions like, you know, oh, shit, I didn't know you changed your name, you know, but they recognize me in the photo. So mm-hmm. it's, we'll see what comes with it. But yeah, I'm enjoying so, Little Miss Chef Risha. So, so when you changed your name to something a little less ratchet, that's when they gave you the blue check? Um, actually, no, I, for the longest time, and this is something that, you know, I have been discussing with my dick appointment. Um, (laughs) I was like, you know, I really want to like rebrand myself, but you know, everyone knows me as Kanye Breast when I go out, you know, most times when I go out in DC, somebody will run up to me and say, you know, Oh, are you Kanye Breast? And they're like, you know, Oh, I love your recipes. I would just much rather have them come up to me and say, oh, shit, it's Chef Risha, yada, yada. Um, but when I when I was talking to him about it, I was like, what should I do? You know, I don't, I've been wanting to change my name for like a long time. And none of the names that I wanted were available. I just wanted to go by at Risha, but somebody else took it, some chick. Um, and I was like, okay, well, I know that I want people to take what I do more seriously I might as well just go with Chef Risha. And um, I applied for the verification um, about a week before I got it. So it happened mm. like way faster than I thought it would. And I didn't think I would get it because I thought you had to be like, you know, in some sort of, I, I don't know. I just didn't know like how how serious uh, you had to be with it. I sent them all all the places that I've been mentioned, all my work. Um, I think having my YouTube page really helped because, you know, a lot of people that I know from YouTube, they actually don't have a website. YouTube is their website and they're verified. So it's like, you know, you, you know that this person is who they say that they are. So I think that's what helped. Um, Like I said, I wasn't expecting it, but it just kind of happened and, it's it's been really helpful. You know, I was I was still doing very well without the blue check, but you know, it helps when people are looking for chefs and looking for people to work with. Um it's it's pretty cool to have, but you know, it was I don't know, it was something that I I 
I knew I needed um, in the future, but I just didn't know which. I didn't know which name to use, and I didn't know how to go about it. But I got the shit now, so it's, it's it is what it is. I I kind of have that struggle where I've thought about rebranding my Twitter app. I've kept it the way that it is for a long time because I just felt like it was a brand in itself. But then I think about yeah. Like things I want to do at my show and do at my podcast, I I feel like I feel like on one end from a comedic standpoint I could get away with it, but then also on another standpoint I don't want to lose opportunities because people are afraid to say it to their kids. And I've already thought of a way to combat that. Like the 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 name Shitty is not just a made up name; it's actually a, a childhood nickname. It has nothing to do with actual shit, but. Um, <laughs> it's a play on words. I get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a it's a play on words. So I've thought about that, and 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 I'm I'm still thinking about it because you know I have like big aspirations for my show, and I don't want that to stand in the way. So I get so people know me as shitty. People know me as Corey, uh, and I'm I'm cool with either one. But I feel like at some point I'm gonna have to make a decision about that. Yeah, I mean, personally, I think me you know was okay Kanye breast is obviously a play off of Kanye Kanye West like Mm -hmm. duh and because I'm a woman and I've got a huge rack but you know I had to start looking at it from a business point and it's like okay it's a cute name but um you know when it comes to working with actual companies which like I said I've been blessed to work with a lot of companies even as Kanye breast but I just want to be able to expand it. And if it's uncomfortable for a lot of people to say, um, or if it comes with like some sort of prejudgment, um, you know, where it's like, oh, well, you know, her name's Kanye Breast. Like maybe she's not the right one for us. It's like, no, Mm -hmm. bitch, I can cook. So (laughs) I didn't want that. (laughs) I didn't want that to like hinder me. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. like I said, for a long time, like, I remember last year I was um, I was talking to Chef Roble and he he's actually the reason why I kind of toned down my Twitter account in the first place because he was like you know I love how you are who you are like you're unapologetically you he's like always be you but just it's a just take this into consideration because I know how ratchet he is and he's got a good balance of, you know, being himself, being ratchet, but being professional and being about his shit, about his business. And, you know, I used to, like I said, before I calmed down, before I became like more PG-13, you know, we were all kind of like wander. We were like wandering wandering around the timeline aimlessly. We didn't really see it for ourselves. We were posting porn and yada, 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 just being like big kids. But, (laughs) you know, once the money starts coming in, you really want to like focus um, on how to, you know, just build better relationships with more companies. So it's, it's something that if you're thinking about doing it, think long and hard because, you know, it's especially if you plan on like applying for verification, which I think you totally should. Um, Cause oh, they, nice. they'd give it to you. No, but you should. Like, I think everyone who has a brand or a goal or something like a website, um, whatever they're doing and they're trying to like monetize that and, and make it bigger, they should definitely like go for it. And I think that's why Twitter even opened up, the verification process for people um, before, you know, I never looked into it. Like I just wasn't that pressed um, <laughs> to have the to, the blue check. And it wasn't that I'm pressed now. It's just like, okay, I'm Chef Risha. I want to be the only Chef Risha on Twitter. So let me just get that shit like verified. And I changed that. I changed my Instagram. Um, and it's just opened up already, like within the last week, already opened up a lot of doors for me, you know, there's companies reaching out to me who just want to pay me for either posting about something that is relevant to uh, the kitchen or whatever, um, you know, just being an influence. And, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. So I just feel like if, if you're thinking about it, do it. Um, just think long and hard how you want to brand yourself. But it's worth it, especially if it's some you want to take your your uh, podcast to the next level. Definitely do it. 
That's that's super dope. Like I kind of I looked like a maybe a year or so ago. Like I was just curious about how the verification process went. And, you know, they were super secretive about it. Mm-hmm. You got to go to like eighty websites and piece stuff together. So now, so now they've kind of just opened it up, and there's a verification. Like there's an yeah. application for it. Yeah, you um, I think it's like verification dot twitter dot com or something like that. And you have to prove who you are. Uh, You have to, um, a lot of people aren't comfortable with this, but this is just how it's always been done. They Mm -hmm. need a picture of your license, um, just like the photo part and the name and everything. I'm pretty sure you can blur out, you know, your sensitive information, like your social, if that's on there, but Mm -hmm. they need to see that. Um, They need at least two to four points of reference of, you know, something that um, can prove who you are. Like, like for example, your website or your YouTube account or, you know, in your uh, case, it would be your podcast website um, and maybe something else. So it's almost like, you know, when you go to the DMV and they want to prove the verification uh it's it's pretty easy, but mm-hmm. you never know. Like they they can deny you. You know what I mean. So I wasn't expecting to get it, but I'm I'm just glad that you know I did. <laughs> so it's it's a pretty easy process, and I thought it would take forever. Like you know, I'm pretty sure people apply at like a ridiculous rate per minute, um, but it only took them a week, if that. So. I wonder what safeguards they have to just stop everybody from getting like a check, right? So it's like my kind of like my theory on super Walmarts. If every super Walmart is a super Walmart, then there are no super Walmarts. You know what I mean? So uh, do you have any insight on what they do <laughs> to to kind of help prevent that? Because it's yeah, no fun I mean, if everybody got it. Like, give me a different color. I'm, yeah, I mean... Knows. I, I I thought the same thing. Like when I heard that they opened it up, you know, even then I wasn't like I was like, okay, I guess, you know. Um, but as I like I said, as I started rebranding myself, you know, I, people who I know that are verified were like, "Yo, you really need you should do this." And I was like, "For what?" Like I know who I am, and then they kind of convinced <laughs> me to do it. But as far as people being able to apply for it, here's the thing: there's going to be a lot of people who apply for it, there's going to be way more people who get denied than the ones that get it. And a lot of people just think it's about how many followers you have. You can have 20 followers and still get a blue check. It depends on, you know, your entire brand and, um, you know, how, like I said, how you can prove you are who you say you are. And, you know, a lot of people on Twitter are missing their calling. You know, a lot of them are really funny or they give great advice or they should have some sort of YouTube channel, some sort of website. They should be monetizing their tweets in some kind of way. Um, Those are the people that should apply for it. If you're just on there and you have nothing to offer, you probably got 20,000, maybe 50, 60 or 100,000 followers, but you still have nothing to offer, then you're probably not going to get the verification if you, know, you don't have like that website, right. those two website backups or like some sort of media kit. Mm. Do you have a media kit? Okay. So I don't know if I have a media kit or not. What's a media kit? A media kit is basically, it's kind of like a, uh, kind of like a resume um you okay so for example my media kit is actually linked in my bio so you can take a look at that but it's just you know I have it kind of broken down um into little sections you can do up to 10 pages I wouldn't go more than that but it's essentially you telling the world who you are you introduce your website you introduce your craft or whatever it is that you do um, you introduce yourself, you tell the world what your social numbers are. So pretty much add up all your Twitter account followers, um, Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, anything, you know, applicable that will let people know what your, uh, what your reach is and what your influence is. And, and then you tell people what you're available for. Like if you want to work with me and do like podcast stuff or, uh, 
um, sponsored blog post or something like that. It's just something that lets other companies that may, because you have, you ever seen people like doing sponsored tweets or sponsored blog posts and mm-hmm. stuff like that? And you're like wondering, how do they get, how do these people find them? You know, how do they get paid to do that? And it's because they have a media kit and, you know, companies are looking for media kits once they see it and they're like, oh, oh shit, you know, you have a thousand followers. That's great. Most people don't. Um or you have, you know, this this is your reach on YouTube and we would like for you to do a sponsored video or something like that. You know, it's that's what a media kit will help you do. And it's just oh. important that it's online somewhere. So you can take a look at mine and kind of get at like it right now. The, yeah, you can just see that it's like, okay, you introduce who you are, you let them know what you do, what you're available to do, what your numbers are, what your website gets a month, like how many views, how many hits. Um, and yeah, they, they just start hitting you up like, hey, you know, we'll pay you $100 for this, we'll pay you $300 for that. It's just, it's good extra money. It's how you make money from being an influencer. Wow. That's, mm-hmm. wow, that's amazing. That's what's mm-hmm. happening. Like, and I, yeah. you know, I've been trying to like, like you, you, you were like real big with it. And me, I've just been trying to get somebody to do uh, a press release for me. I can't find that. Now we on media. Like, kids. just, just do it yourself. Like, you know, I don't have an agent. I don't have a uh, PR person or nothing like that. So it's good to just, you know, it, it doesn't matter, you know, if you don't have the same numbers as someone else, because some people may get discouraged, like, well, I don't have, you know, 50,000 followers. It doesn't matter. Like, the point is, if they see that you have a really decent following, they want to use you because it's like, hey, you know, that's a thousand people that may possibly see this product if they tweet about it or if they post on their blog about it. And it's not even you. A lot of people say, oh, well, that's selling out. It's selling out if you're doing shit that you don't want to post about. You don't have to take the money. But like if you, for example, like if, if a company came up to me and was like, hey, we want you to review our knives. And, you know, I'm a chef. That's up my alley. Sure, you can pay me to review your knives and I'll give you an honest review. Um, you know, you just say at the end if this post is sponsored or whatnot. And I even have that on my website now because it's like some posts, they're either sponsored or some are, you know, things where I got something for free. It's not often, but um, it happens a few times. But now that I have this media kit, it's going to probably happen a lot more. And I've never been the type to kiss somebody's ass, kiss a company's ass just because they gave me something for free. Because when I was doing beauty blogging, I remember this chick hit me up and she was like, hey, um, we're a new company and we'd like to send you this palette of eyeshadows and, you know, we would like for you to review it. And I told her, I was like, you know, I'll review it. I'm going to be honest with whatever the quality is. So she sent it to me. It was the shittiest <laughs> palette I had ever used in my life. It was chalky. It was it was complete garbage. And I gave her an F um, on my blog and she got pissed. And I was <laughs> like, look, boo-boo, I mean, I'm not about to sit here and, you know, kiss your ass or make or deceive people and make people feel like you know this is the, the the bomb product when I try to apply this to my eyes and you got me out here looking ashy as fuck so I was like I, I was nice about your product but I had to give the quality an F and that's just what it is and I told you that before you sent it to me like don't get mad because I'm being honest so all like you know at that time all my readers um you know they were just like appreciative that I was being that honest but I just I don't know how to lie to people it's just easier for me to be truthful so even if you are doing something that's you know you're getting paid for it nobody should be blogging for free period I don't care what your niche is if it's podcasts if it's doing some chef shit beauty blogging you should not be doing that for free so make your media kit get paid and just start stunting on people like that's what this shit is about I am so motivated. Like, you really just powered me up. Like, I thought I was motivated before. Like, I'm, like, ready to do this shit. 
I'm ready to do you this. You should. <laughs> you should. If you have any, look, seriously, like if you have any questions, like making your media kit or what should go in it, like I said, take a look at mine as like a template. And, you know, if you have any questions, let me know. Cause I've seen some media kits that are only a page long and I've seen some that are up to 10. It, it doesn't have to be like an over, an over slot of information. It's just, you want to get the main points out there. You know, mm-hmm. my name is Corey and this is, this is my podcast. And, you know, this is, this is my goal. And this is my, these are my numbers right now. And, you know, next thing you know, People like, hey, we like to put like a sponsorship spot on your podcast. Can you talk about the product during like a commercial break or some shit? Like, that's how that happens, and you get okay. paid because cause, because the OTAP show is looking for sponsors. If you out there, so yeah, yeah, that, that'll do work. that shit. That'll work. Next question for you. So your name mm-hmm. Risha. I've always wanted to know, like, is that short for something or is that just what it is on the birth? Are you making a short joke? No, well, oh, I, I um, guess I could. <laughs> that's, 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 that's three it's, times. It's, I'm about it's to get definitely, you. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, um, it's my name. It's, it's what, it's, it's kind of like one of the main nicknames that I've always had my entire life. Uh, you know, I've got aunts that call me Smurfette, Riri, uh, just Re. My, I had an aunt who died like way before I could ever meet her. She was seven years old. Um, she, she died of rheumatic fever and I look exactly like her. It's, it's very scary. Um, we have a picture of her in the dining room of my mom's house um, in like this, this glass China cabinet. And I swear to God, growing up, seeing that picture, I always thought it was me. Um, so her name was Teresa. So, you know, they just started calling me Risha. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things, but yeah. So are you Teresa or are you Risha? No, it's Risha. It's Risha. Like Risha is just, you know, an extension of Teresa, which, you know, my aunt just, you know. I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Okay. Okay, cool. See, that's that. See, you get, you get groundbreaking information like that here on the OTAP show. Nobody else <laughs> found out that story. So we broke that story right there. That story is nowhere else. You, you did. Get that here. You did. Yeah. That's what's up. Yo, I just got like I'm just looking at this box of Pop Tarts because you know that you know that fat kid what is it, fat kid deals or some shit? Um, mm-hmm. they tweeted about you can get a big ass box of thirty two Pop Tarts for like four dollars. <sighs> Please oh, help me. Cause that's I don't, a must do. I don't even yeah, I, I mean, I did it because I was like four dollars, and it was the strawberry kind or the brown sugar kind. But I'm just looking at them right now, and I know, like, as soon as I get off this phone, that's what I'm about to eat. That's really sad. So, so it's thirty two for the four. Like you, you spend that much? Thir- for yes, like thirty two. A, a good eight. Yeah, exactly. It's it's um sixteen brown sugars and sixteen uh, strawberries. I'm only eating the strawberries because I ate the brown sugar ones like so much as a teenager that I physically cannot stomach them anymore. So, so what's I'm gonna get favorite, rid of those. What's your favorite pop tart? The strawberry. Do you prefer I'm, the pop I'm tarts like, with? You prefer it with frosting or without frosting? Um, I'll be honest. I don't care. Um. If it's strawberry, I'll eat it. I'll eat the unfrosted ones. I know a lot of people probably like freaking out right now but i don't care it's <laughs> i'll i'll eat it um i'll eat the frosted kind the the funny thing is i think the frosted kind actually has like less calories than the unfrosted kind which is really mm. weird to me but yeah that's what i think um but yeah i'll eat them both i'll eat them All both right. i really don't care toasted or untoasted Oh, it has to be toasted. I See, was a I savage as a kid. To, I ain't got time to toast, man. I'm still that it savage. It takes two minutes. Man, it takes just, two minutes. Man, let me take it out the floor and let's get to it, man. I mean, look, when I was what? a kid, I'm not going to lie. I used to grab, like, I used to grab a pack of Pop-Tarts, cold as, like, just, re- it was just stale, like, just stale Pop-Tarts, and I would eat those on the bus, unfro or untoasted and not care but now it's like all right yes i'm a chef there are some guilty 
like trash food pleasures that I have and pop tarts is definitely one of them, but they have to be toasted. Like I can taste the, the love and the butter and the crust <laughs> when it's toasted. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, life too short to be life too short to be toasting pop tarts. It's man. two it's, minutes. You got you got to get you got to open it in like it's because it's ready like it's ready fresh out the box like you could toast it or like oh, you could, like go oh, right oh, now ready fresh out the box. Okay, I'm way too perverted for you to be saying shit like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> way too perverted. I'm gonna leave that one alone. I'm gonna leave that alone. But it's yeah. nice to know that you can't wait. <laughs> yeah, you just got to, you know what my my, bro, my my little brother, my this dude here, this dude said this dude said to me, I got a couple of hot and ready's coming over to the No no he said he said no he said he said he said he said, he said I got a couple of little Caesars coming over to the house. I said oh. little Ce- I said little Caesars. He was like, Yeah, man, a couple of hot and ready's. I was like, Man, get out of here, man. <laughs> Oh my god! Well, I—I I mean, in his, I hope the pussy wasn't five dollars. <laughs> he said, a "Couple of little Caesars." <laughs> <laughs> that dude, that dude is like the—that dude is one of the funniest people on the planet to me. My brother, man, that—that—that that, that guy there, he's—he's he's twenty-one. That is this, hilarious, that dude. Is, is. I just sit there, and it's like. I'm trying to figure out like where is he getting this? To, what did I get it? Because my mom is also one. We just sit around the house and crack jokes, and so like he just he. Oh, that's that dude, dope. Man. Yeah, that's all we do. That's all we do as a family. Mm-hmm. Roast each other. That's what's you, up. The family that roasts together stays together. Yeah, see, I thought you were gonna say family that roasts together, toast together. I was gonna have to get you out of here because that's not gonna fly. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> no, I'm being I'm being good today, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I see your shade. I see your shade. I told Whatever. You, I told you the one you, talking you, about eating. You the one talking about eating some some uh, pastries fresh out the box, not even Listen, like warming it up. You just go straight for it, huh? Like life too, <laughs> life too short, man. You got to once you once you open the box, you got to go in, man. Who got time for it? I'm gonna have to dap Pinky up, and she's not gonna know why I'm dapping her. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I see you, Pinky. <laughs> man, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> The last night, we, you and I, we were talking, and you said to me that your tweets are PG. And to my response okay. was, my response was, it must be two PGs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let me explain. All right. Okay. See, what had happened was, <laughs> I... I used to be a lot, you know, I'm still a lot. I'm just a little less of a lot. Um, You know, it's like, I, I kind of bite my tongue, not bite my tongue. I don't bite my tongue, but I just, I'm more careful with, you know, the things that I say because I have a lot more eyes on me. I have um, the eyes of people who want to work with me in the future. And, you know, you kind of don't want to scare them off. Like, so I just, I keep it a little bit more. I'd say PG thirteen, maybe not PG, but definitely PG thirteen. I'm definitely not X rated as I used to be. I don't think so. I mean, I think I'm compared to some people. I think I'm pretty like innocent and wholesome. Oh, okay, you don't um, think so? I think PG thirteen is is very very modest. I think I'd say okay. Not- well, you know what? It don't matter what you think because <laughs> I know that. I know that I am a lot. I'm a lot more chill than I used to be. I'll just say that I, I'm still a lot. Don't get me wrong. Like after eleven o'clock, I really don't give a fuck. I'm just, you know, whatever <laughs> comes to mind, I will say pretty much anything. That you know, I'm a very sexual person. So, yeah, yeah. Is talk there... about you know dicks here and there. <laughs> we and, and you know what? We definitely gonna get to. We're gonna get to that. So that's coming. <laughs> That's coming. Remember, you did it to yourself. So, that's hey, on the if way. the are coming, that's all I care about. 
<laughs> That's all I care about. Let's just keep the dicks coming. But anyway, let's let's proceed. Let's proceed. Okay. So so in terms of like potential people that either you want to work with or that want to work with you, where do you draw that line in terms of content? And where do you distinguish, well, this is my time, so fuck them? Okay. Um one of the things, I'm not gonna lie to you, one of the things that I used to having out um it, it actually happened after I did the doctor show. It was because they they contacted me, you know, and I was like, I remember it was my thirty fourth birthday. I got an email from a producer, and she was like, "Hey, I like your blog. I like your weight loss story. We'd like to, you know, get you in here." And I'm like, "What is this that serious?" So I, I thought she was. I thought it was a joke. Um, turns out it wasn't a joke. And ever since then, you know, I was like, damn, what do I do? Do I stop being myself? Um, you know, do I just put on this front like I'm this whole little, you know, bunny? But I I decided that the best thing to do is just to be myself, maybe a more toned down version. Mm-hmm. But I feel like people either want to work with me or they don't. I would rather you work with me knowing like who I am as a person is, you know, to be somebody that I'm not. Um, and if you don't want to work with me, that's fine too. I really don't care. Like, you know, you, you take it or leave it, but it's, it's definitely, um, I've, I'm, I'm comfortable, you know, I'm more comfortable mm-hmm. with the content. Um, you know, there are certain things that I won't talk about on Twitter, for example, you know, religion and, um, right. Certain things like that. I don't like to get into things like that because I just, it's really no one's business what I think. So, you know me, I'm more of the light hearted side and I keep it, I come with the jokes and I retweet <laughs> funny things and food and sexual things. But yeah, it's just, it's pretty much, I am my blog. My blog is basically food meets sex. And, um, you know, this happened because people were like, hey, you know, I made my wife your macaroni and cheese. And now <laughs> I'm in her macaroni and cheese and we making babies and shit. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's dope, you know, and I, I have to kind of just kind of keep that going. Like, I am who I am. So I feel like at this point, I'm 30. I'll be 36 in November. It's it's like fuck it like if you if you rock with me you rock with me if you don't you don't and how do you yeah. feel how do you feel knowing that there are people that that eat your macaroni and cheese and now they having kids off of it you know what <laughs> it's really wild to me like it's it kind of makes me emotional like low key um because I remember when I was a little girl, I wanted to be a pediatrician. I didn't know why. I just felt like I wanted to help people. And as I got older, you know, anything in the line of hospitality has always made me happy. Like, you know, making something for somebody, whether it's food or designing something, because I used to be a web nerd. So just anything that helps someone else and, you know, they, they're proud of their product that that warms my tits like that shit really <laughs> makes me happy i'm i'm very i don't know like it's it's fucking dope it's dope that's really so, what it is so what happened between the the goal of being the pediatrician to to now you cooking for celebrities where did that change happen at what caused that Okay, so like I said I was little when I wanted to be a pediatrician cuz I like kids but then I got older and they got on my fucking nerves. So I, was like, <laughs> I, was like, hmm. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I, I went through a lot of I want to be this. I want to be this. Um, I wanted to be like an astronomer. I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to do all types of shit. I even wanted to do a little bit of journalism. Um, I used to write. I used, I've literally done everything and I've been good at all of it. And it was very hard to pick something. So the 10, 15 years that I was doing web design, I would come home stressed out because I was dealing with a client that was like an ungrateful shit. And the only thing that made me happy was being in my kitchen. And it just was like, I would eat my food and I would be like, fuck, this shit is good. And then, you know, I started sharing recipes. So it was like, it you know, it was just a progression. It was like being a chef became, was one of the last things I thought I would ever be, 
but it's the one thing that has always made me happy eating. I love to eat. I love food. I love to cook it. I love to share tips and recipes with people. So that's that's where I'm happy. I really don't see myself doing anything else. What was on that journey? What was your biggest failure? On the food journey, um, when I first started, (laughs) I was, I think I was like 15 or 16 when I started cooking like a lot more. I would come home from school and, you know, I didn't want to like spend money on Domino's or McDonald's. So I started getting in the kitchen and I remember um, I was 16 because I made my dad um, a Father's Day brunch Mm -hmm. and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I was cooking grits <laughs> and I didn't know anything about the whole like hominy to water ratio. So I was just pouring like a whole shitload of grits in there and I didn't know that they swole up. So what <laughs> happened was, <laughs> what happened was like I, t- I poured the grits out. But by the time he came downstairs, which was all of maybe 20 seconds, it turned into a cinder block. And I made like these oh. leathery ass biscuits. Oh, I was trash. I was <laughs> trash in the kitchen. And I swear to God, like I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm I'm not gonna stop because I really love to eat. I really want to learn how to do this shit. So lo and behold, you know, Food Network comes out and I'm like, all right, I'm watching Emerald and I'm learning what BAM means and all this other shit. So yeah, I was. I was trash. I was like complete <laughs> trash when I first started. It are was you, terrible. Are you still selling cookies and, and other foods on your website? Not right now. Because, no, no I will be very soon um, in the fall. I plan to open my store back up. I'm thinking about selling T-shirts with like really provocative food messages on them, which I'll go into like... At another time, I don't want to spill all my secrets, mm-hmm. but they'll be lit. Very dope. You got to so, do yeah. it. So, yeah. You got to yeah, do it. Yeah, of course. I um. So, last year, I ordered the... There were these lemon cookies that you made. And the lemon were, blueberry ones? Yes. I ordered those. <laughs> they were amazing. Like, so, me and my girlfriend, we were sitting in the bed basically eating Reese's cookies. They was like... A, Yes, you you was you was a part of that. You was right there in the mix. You so. and your girl, my cookies, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was what was happening. You know what I mean? So, no, I stop. like my I cookies to be eaten. <laughs> Risha is out of control, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Um, so, My bad. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're good. So uh, I understand the non-disclosure agreements. That's that's fine. Are you able to talk about past celebrities or other celebrities that you may have cooked for? Kevin Durant. I made him the red velvet white chocolate chip ones. Those are his favorites. I've known him for about two years. Like that's the homie. Um, we we both love foods, but yeah. I've cooked for him. Um, do you know Hit Boy who did uh Niggas in Paris? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I went to when I was in LA for this YouTube event, um, I met up with him and he hired me like right on the spot. So I made him like my shrimp and grits and he absolutely loved it. Um, I've cooked for Ocho Cinco, I did a fight party for him. Um, I did a BMW event. Mm-hmm. Um, I did two of those and there was a lot of celebrities there, like a lot of, um, reality show celebrities. Um, I've worked with Kathy Hughes. I went to her house on Mother's Day and made her a nice Mother's Day brunch, which was like oh. super dope. Aww. And yeah, so I, I've definitely like been here and there, you know, I just like to keep it quiet, but yeah, my pro, my portfolio is pretty fucking sweet right about now i think that is super dope that like you know i don't know how many people know that about you that you know these are the how many celebrities and you know parties and events you've done because you know you you, you're very humble about it you know and it's that's really really cool what is the what which was the most surprising um celebrity that either reached out to you or hired you or request 
Um, to be honest with you, it had to be Kathy, the, the Kathy Hughes job because mm-hmm. it was literally like two days before uh, Mother's Day. And that year, my mom was actually, she was in North Carolina doing something because she's she sings. So she was doing her thing. And um, I knew she wasn't going to be here for Mother's Day. So uh, I actually had time. Chef Roble, he reached out to me and he was like, hey, um, I need you to cook a brunch for Kathy Hughes. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, um, I need you to do it. You know, I know it's last minute, but um, she's, she hurt her, she hurt her foot. She was actually going to go out to eat. They were going to, well, they were going to take her out to eat her family. Um, but she hurt her foot. So they wanted to do something for her at the house. And uh, last minute, I just like grabbed a friend of mine and we went to her house and, She's like so major, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. it was just it was such an honor to be in her presence and around her family and feeding them. They love the food and you know, it was it was really dope. Um I I I learned a lot just being around her. You know, she she's a very humble lady too and very down to earth. I remember she like we had leftover grits cuz I made her shrimp and grits too and um she poured her leftover grits in like a Ziploc bag and put it in her purse. So she, <laughs> she <laughs> the ultimate she's like compliment. Super down to earth. Yes, super down to earth. And it, yeah, that was like the most. That was that was my favorite. That was definitely my favorite. That's cool. I'm super yeah. happy that you got to experience that. That is that Thank is you. really really good. And especially especially today. When you know, not only just not even, like, of course, blacks are under fire and, and, and under turmoil, but black women in general. Like, you are a successful black woman, and I'm super proud of you for that. Thank um, you. When you think about it, like, because when I see like interactions, one of the things that I notice is th- that you serve as a certain inspiration uh, to women on a multitude of levels. The first one is. You're in you're in tremendous shape, um, and you, and so the thing about that is I know I've, from pictures that I've seen, um, you it wasn't always the case. So to mm-hmm. give an idea of where you were and 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 where you are now at your how much did you weigh at your heaviest? Um, you know what I don't I'm not sure I I do know it was like over 180 though, and I'm five okay. three. So that's a lot of fucking weight on a little person. But the mm-hmm. thing about me, even though, even when I was bigger, um, you know, I was, I carried it pretty well. So I was fat, but I wasn't like, you know, bleh, just yeah. spilling out everywhere. Um, it was, it was still a lot. You know, I wasn't happy with it. Um I just decided to fucking change and, and lose that shit. I got tired of it. You know, I I really, this is going to sound so cliche and you probably won't believe me, but I swear to God, like I was 90% um, ready to lose the weight. And then Beyonce dropped her album, her surprise album. So mm-hmm. I'm sitting there with my boyfriend at the time and I'm watching like all her videos. And then that partition video came up when she's like in that thong or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at the, I'm like, this bitch, this bitch done had a motherfucking baby. <laughs> um, I ain't had no babies. What's my excuse? <laughs> so that was the last push that I needed to get my ass in the gym. And I just, yeah, like I've, I'm still like a thickums. Like I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I have some weight on me, but it's a lot smaller. Like I fit into, um, like between a four, a six, and an eight now, where at that time I was like a size 12 slash 14. Mm-hmm. Um, I had moved to Atlanta with my boyfriend at the time. And we all we did was eat and fuck and, well, and get high. That, and that, that will turn all that shit around. Yep. And I, I went down to Atlanta like a size 10. Within, like, two months, I was a 12. Um, And then I got up to, like, a fucking 14. And almost a 16. Like, I was kind of pushing, like, the 16. The the 14 was getting a little tight. I was Mm -hmm. like, God damn. You know, we we both got fat. Like, he had, like, 
you know, beginner titties, beginner man titties. <laughs> um, <laughs> he had those. And he had like a little gut and shit. And he kind of was starting to, you know, turn like Carl Winslow-ish. And I was like, you know uh. what? We need to... We need to do something about this. So we we both got into the gym and yeah, we encouraged each other. It was it was dope. But I was I was I was large. I was a large one. So I know you lived down here in Atlanta for a while and that was actually gonna be my next question. Is that what brought you down here living with your dude? I wanted to just get out of Virginia for a while. Um I wanted to, because I have visited, you know, Atlanta a few times, and I had always loved it. It's it's a it's different down there. I can't describe it. It's like true Southern hospitality. Mm-hmm. Um, I have so many supporters in Atlanta, and I knew that if I wanted to go down there and start like my baking business, I would be good. And lo and behold, I was, you know, and I I was just really humbled by all of that um but yeah I just wanted to get the hell out of Virginia for a while and um then I had to come back up here because I was getting more jobs up here Mm -hmm. and it was just cheaper for me to be here um versus flying back and forth but yeah I'm ready to get back on the road and probably either move back to Atlanta I don't know I might go to Maryland I I really don't know what I'm gonna do whatever wherever the wind blows me um, is where I'll go. That is, I want you to think about what you just said there for a minute, because I, that, for the people listening, like that's the, ble- that's a true blessing right there. You just said, you might go here or you might go there. Then you said, I don't know, whichever way to win, but do you understand how blessed you are <laughs> to have that? Like you could just, if the wind blow in this direction, this is where I'll land at. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, I mean, what's shit, happening. Hopefully that shit will blow me to fucking California. I'd love to be in LA, but um, you know, I've got a lot. I've got a lot going on for me right now and who knows where I'll end up. So, it's just kind of like in the meantime, I just take on these little cooking jobs and you know, I do my YouTube videos and um, I'll start selling stuff again cuz I kind of miss it and people people have actually been like harassing me about it so <laughs> I kind of have to do that again but yeah I mean I'm lucky enough to be in a position where there's really nothing stopping me um you know as far as kids go I think they're like adorable and I definitely want some in the future but I can't have any right now because that would definitely put like a wedge in my plans um because the type of mom that I would be it would just be like all about my child it's not like okay, I can take you with me. It's like, no, I need to be like a hands-on mother. Mm -hmm. Um, So when that happens, it'll happen. But before that happens, I just, I'm trying to get like in a situation where I don't have to worry about money anymore. I don't have to worry about where my next check is coming from. Cause you know, people think, okay, yeah, you're cooking for a celebrity and and all this stuff. But the thing is like, but the gag is unless they (laughs) hire you like permanently, um, you still have to go out and get jobs. Like it's it's not like a guaranteed, you know, paycheck. It's right. still a struggle. So it's you know, I'm I'm trying to just get around that wedge of um being like the struggle chef artist, and you know, into a place where I don't have to worry about paying for anything. So what is it that? What do you want to do? Like it's your dream. You have the world is your oyster right now. All these opportunities. In a perfect world, what does Risha want to do? Where does she want to take Carnal Dish? Where do you see it? Oh, my God. <sighs> okay. I think that the one thing, the, the one thing I definitely want to do, um, I want to leave some sort of legacy behind. I want to leave an impact on the food world in some kind of way. So whatever way that'll be, I'm not sure what it is. Um, Cause things always go like left of where I think they're going to go a good left, but they go left. Mm-hmm. So it's really hard to say for sure, but you know, I definitely want to get like some actual cookbooks out, um, you know, be on TV a little bit, travel the world and eat like all types of food, I just want people to think of Carnal Dish as like the go-to place when they 
want to make something for someone that they love and mm. someone that they they want to share like some sort of intimacy with like intimacy for me isn't just you know hey girl take off your panties it's <laughs> it's like you know let me cook you something like from the heart and you taste it and then you can take my panties off later and eat me <laughs> so it's like i want to <laughs> i want to like I want that to be like embedded in people and it's already like starting to, which is really dope. Um, you know, I've had people show me pictures of, Hey, I made your macaroni and cheese and look at my newborn. Like this is, this is the Mac and cheese baby. So <laughs> shit like that, you know, like I, I just, I just want to leave that imprint and that's what I want to do. So whatever Avenue I need to take in order to get there is, is what I'm willing to do at this point. When it comes to teaching people how to cook and teach people how to cook lovingly, what do you find uh, is people's biggest mistake or their biggest hindrance? What holds them back from being a great cook? They're in their own way, just like Mm. I was. Like, you know, you get in the kitchen and you don't know what you're doing and you're trying to be perfect or you're trying to compare yourself to the Ina Gardens and the... um, What's that chick's name? The really sexy one on Food Network, Nigella Lawson. Uh, You know, it's like people like that. Let them be them. You be you. You get in the kitchen, taste your food. Like, taste your fucking food, first of all. Because, you know, a lot of people, they follow the recipe to the letter. And then they don't like the way it tastes at the end. You have to taste as you go. Just build up your own confidence and you'll actually start to develop your own palate and you know, okay, this needs a little bit of garlic or this needs some acid. So let me put a little bit of lemon juice in here, you know, just get creative and stop overthinking it. It's just food at the end of the day. It's just fucking food. And it's not like a rocket ship or anything like that. So it's not like you're going to fuck up. You may fuck up a little bit, but that's the fun of it. As long as you Mm -hmm. taste as you go, I think you know, people are just, they just get so intimidated. And I understand why, but I think, you know, I just try to like tell people to have fun with it. You know, a lot of people say, hey, um, what exactly should I make with this? And it's like, I'll give you options, but I'm not going to tell you what to make because I want you to like figure it out on your own. That's and, the magic of you it. know, yeah, of course, you know, you, you just put a little love into it. You put your own, you like, you get in there, you make some like, crab cakes with Corey's little touch on it and you're hey. happy and you're proud of it. <laughs> so, you know what? I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. All right. So one of my um, favorite recipes or videos from you, and I'm doing this to my listeners because it fucked me up. <laughs> so, so it's, so, so I had to suffer. So y'all got to suffer too. Is the first you taught people, which is so awesome. You taught people how to make their own fresh pasta. That was that's that's nice. Mm-hmm. But it's the I'm a I'm a bit I like to cook Italian food, Italian type mm-hmm. things. And so you have the fettuccine Alfredo, and you went on to talk about how um, the Alfredo cream should not be super thick and snotty, which fucked it up for me. So. I... <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for, for for ruining that for me because I I'm thought my sorry. shit had I thought my shit had to be like super creamy and whatnot. But with your recipe, it's not super creamy. Like you said, you think you in the video you were saying how you you know it looked like it might be a lot, but it's not. It just it just sort of needs to glaze it. It doesn't necessarily need yeah. to to be smothered in it. Yeah. I think you know what? I'm gonna tell you why a lot of people um, and even even me when I first started, because I when I first started cooking like fettuccine alfredo, you know, that was like as a kid, that's like one of your favorite things to eat. And mm-hmm. let's just not bullshit. A lot of us started with the shit in the jar, um, which is super <laughs> gloppy and glue. It's like glue. And, you know, we come home and we think that it's supposed to look. Bad. But when you go to like an official Italian restaurant, you're not going to get some thick stodgy creamy mess like that they're going to give you something that is lightly dressed and it's Mm -hmm. perfect because fresh pasta 
you know, it continues to absorb the sauce. So you're going to, it's going to get in there some kind of way. And it's, it's just perfect. So I'm sorry I ruined that for you, but <laughs> you know, it's just like a visual cue. You don't want that shit to be all snotty and gloopy. And yeah. Just... Thanks. Thanks again. You're snotty. welcome. <laughs> 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 have you have you thought about uh opening your own restaurants anywhere? I have. Um I think okay, so here's the thing. My favorite thing in the world to eat is like a burger or a nice brunch. I love the mix of sweet and savory. Yeah, um me too. Me yeah, too. I, love I love brunch, brunches. man. Like yeah. brunch food is just the fucking shit to me because you can have something a little bit more savory a little bit more heavy and then if you want like some really fluffy buttermilk pancakes and like a fucking uh a steak or or whatever you want like you can combine those two and can't nobody say shit to you so if i do open a restaurant it's gonna be a brunch spot it's gonna be a like brunch all day long with you know i love burgers i love to grind my own meat and make my own brioche bun so i definitely will be making like i have like a line of burgers and of course i would have like a little bakery on the side where you can get like fresh pastries and cookies and brownies and shit like that but that's later in the future because that shit is like a lot of fucking work <laughs> you know i've worked in restaurants before um in in hotel kitchens and it's it's not easy it is an it's not easy but it's definitely something that i would do and it would have to be when i'm on a scale where i can say okay i want to open this place up let's hire this chef i want you to cook it like this i'll come in from time to time and by time from time to time i mean like every day and make sure you're not fucking up and (laughs) you know and just run this shit so i would love to do that um, on a smaller scale, I would love to have a food truck. Um, hmm. I'm really open to anything as long as I'm able to feed people. Okay. All right, cool. That's and really we- like all I want to do. I just want to feed you, baby. That's all <laughs> I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's so silly. When you, when, you, when you start that food truck or when you start that restaurant, I want you to come back on the show. So that uh, I can help you promote it. And I want to be the one to break the news. Of course. (laughs) Because you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. If I do open up anything, it's going to be in Atlanta. Turn up. Like, that's my market. (laughs) Like, I, there's no other place that I want to open anything, like, you know, brick and mortar wise, um, than Atlanta. Like, that's where I belong. So that's where I'll be. You'll be, you'll be the first one there. That's what I'm saying. Like, yo, when you can't make it in to check on your people, like, I'm there. You know what I mean? That's what, that, that'll do it. That's what it is. Yeah. Oh, that shit'll be lit. <laughs> you, speaking of brunches, do you know, like, when brunches, I love brunch buffets. I like, man. I like, 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 we have like, Cop- Copeland's brunch buffet is amazing. They're like, I just, yeah, doing so when you do the brunch spot, make it a buffet. You want a buffet? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know what? I'm, I think we'll do the buffet on certain days. Like maybe on Sunday we'll like a buffet. Because here's the thing. Like, I don't know. You know what? Now I'm thinking about it. That might not be a bad idea. I'm trying to tell Maybe. Um, yeah. Because it'll be like a fancy buffet. Not that. Not no sloppy shit. You know what uh-uh. I mean? Like. Live Not no music. picked over. Yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's a good idea. I didn't see? I never considered that. See, and you got that idea for free. You see what I'm saying? I sure the fuck did. That's because we yeah. people. That's because we people. That's, what... <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. I'm gonna consider that. That might actually be a lot more um efficient too. Mm-hmm. See, look at that. I can... Yeah, I can bring out like a whole tray of um waffles and then Oh, or no, we'll do the waffles fresh. They, those have to be made fresh. And, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now you got my juices flowing. So See? I'm going to start thinking about that. All right. So let's, cha- let's change you. gears a little bit. Let's let's change from food. Tell me, where do people often get- Are we going to talk fu- about dicks? That's 
Jesus Christ. Okay. All right. So. You oh, know I'm what? sorry. You know what? Where, no, 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 no. Go. Nah, no, let's, let's do no, it. No, no, no. Let's. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's, so let's this... go with what you were talking about. Seriously, let's do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to talk about dicks? We can talk about dicks later. <laughs> I just wanted to know if I should, like, you know, stretch a little bit. But go ahead. <laughs> let's, let's, go with, let's go with your idea. <laughs> I was going to ask you where people get you fucked up. <laughs> oh, man. Um, okay, I think, I think most people get me fucked up because, okay, I'm a nice person. Um, I'm short. And you're incredibly, you know, I, you're incredibly sweet. When I met you, you were you were incredibly sweet. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 a southern girl. Like I I'm not a bitch. You know I don't I don't come off. I do kind of have like a resting bitch face. Like you know a couple couple you know dudes will tell me you need to smell and whatever. But mm-hmm. other than that, I'm a pretty nice person. And I think you know some people may mistake that for. You know, oh, well, she's not going to do anything. The fuck I won't. Because if you come at me, if you come at me some kind of way, I definitely um, stick up for myself. My dad taught me how to shoot. My daddy said shoot. And yeah, I, I don't I don't play around. So I don't don't let the smile fool you. That's all I got to okay. say about that. Mm-hmm. OK, so so Risha will fuck you up. I is will. What, is what I gather from that. And if I can't physically, I have uncles. I have lots and lots of uncles who really don't give a fuck about their future. And <laughs> if they need to come up here and fuck somebody up on my behalf, they definitely will. They tell me all the time. They call me and they're like, hey, how you doing, baby girl? You need me to fuck anybody up? So it can happen. <laughs> Did you grow up in a large family? I, I'm i actually an only child. Um, but... We all, me and my cousins, like we all grew up in the same neighborhood. So I was never alone. Mm. Um, it was like me and maybe 11 of my cousins and we played outside together every single day. Um, they were like my siblings. And, you know, of course, as you get older, you grow apart a little bit because, you know, they go off and they have their own families and whatnot. But, um, yeah, I have a very, very, very large family. My grandmother had 13 kids. Um, mm. My grandmother on my dad's side had six. They, yeah, I, it's a, it was a lot of fucking going on in the family. So <laughs> it, it's, we got a large family. It's dope, though. It's dope. So even though right. I've, I've been, I'm an only child, I've never felt like alone so um, but yeah. the, alone, the alone time is cool because you're a scorpio right oh i need my alone time yeah go. i'm a scorpio there mm-hmm. you go that's what's happening i absolutely need my alone time like it's it's paramount you know even when i'm hanging out with friends it's like i love my friends to death but after a while it's like okay i gotta go home because like I, I need to get away from y'all um and it has nothing to do with them. It's just like I just need to be by myself. Like I have been, you know, even though I played with my cousins as a kid, I would come home and play by myself. You know, I learned how to be alone um, and I've learned how to enjoy my own company. So, you know, I never felt like, oh, I don't have any friends. You know, it was, it was never no shit like that. You know, I'm good. Like it's, it's really hard to bore me, too. I don't get bored very easily. Mm, gotcha. All right. So now, mm-hmm. guess 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 what we're about to talk about now? We about to talk about some motherfucking dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> All right. So this is what we're gonna do. This is what we're mm. gonna do. All right. So so I pulled some of your um some of your non PG thirteen tweets. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nobody's ever prepared for this one. And oh, you about to God. you about to answer for some of these tweets that you never thought that you was gonna have to hear again. Let me see. Oh, oh no. Let me see. Let me find one. Oh shit! <laughs> Damn, I'm I'm nervous. Like yeah. Bernie Mac in the back of that in the back of that car. I'm nervous. What you about to do? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, someone said, 
Big girls suck dick like it's going to lower our cholesterol. Your response. <laughs> your response. It lowered mine. <laughs> I didn't say that. Did I say that? Um, listen, on <laughs> April on April 13th, 2013 at 2.36 p.m. Oh, shit. Your response was, it lowered mine. <laughs> okay, well, technically it did. Um, it's exercise. So, yeah, I, 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 that's... Mm-hmm. I, got a funny, I got a funny story. Well, okay. it's, a ser- it's a serious story, but it's a funny story. So, <laughs> I... I um, I suffer from high blood pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, and wait, I need to think if I can tell this story or not. Uh oh. Let me let me think of the time frame. Okay, I'm good. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the and the the doctor was telling me how um it, it was it was actually much worse than that. I, I was uh I found that I had congestive heart failure, which is is under control. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah, it's under control. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to make take it down a little bit, but you know, it was, it was stressful. And so the first month or so, the doctor was like, you know, while this medicine runs through you, you know, I don't want you to have sex for for two months. And so I was trying to bargain at this point, like, dude, two months? What the fuck? Right. So, uh, so he, so it was end up being like three weeks, and he was like, "You're good to go." I was like, "Cool," but I still had high blood pressure, and I would check it often. So I had right. sex. So I had sex one day. I had I checked it before. I checked my blood pressure before, and then afterward. Do you know? Immediately post nut, my blood pressure was super <laughs> not super low, but it was regular post nut. <laughs> Yo. Yo, that's what's up. I'm <laughs> telling you, like, I don't just promote sexual things just to be like a freak or whatever. That shit is good for you. Yes. Fucking yes. is good for you. Yes. Listen, and especially like if if you if you in the middle of fucking, you not messing anything up for nobody else in the world. You not killing. Yes. Nobody. If if motherfuckers that shot people, they were somewhere fucking. Motherfuckers Ex- wouldn't be there. Listen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sex is... Stay your cure. ass out of trouble and stay your ass in some pussy. That's what the, you need to do. Exactly. So when I saw that, like, I showed it to the chick. I was like, look at this. Like, you saw it before. Because I, I was man. like, no. Immediately. That's, fucking, that's making me emotional, man. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> Yeah. So and like so every- seriously, no, but seriously, like it it helps you. It helps like keep your levels. Everything is like perfect because mm. your body needs to nut. It just needs to. That's going to be a quotable that we're going to hear. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure it's heard somewhere else. The body needs <laughs> to nut. The body needs to nut. The body needs to nut. All right, so let's get back to some to you and some more of your uh, some more of your my PG thirteens. Uh, well, PG thirteen, my ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's one. This is actually this is this is probably one of my favorites. A good stroke. This is you. I'm reading your voice. A good stroke. Like, <laughs> no, I'm just, <laughs> just fucking around. Just fucking around. A good. A good stroke is like dick reading poetry to your walls. The eye rolling in the back of your head, pleasure that makes you ugly when you come. Yes. Yes. Oh. See, <laughs> look, remember last night I told you that when we're doing this call, my dick appoint my dick appointment is here. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. So this this just this just got me extra juicy because it's true. It's true. It's like the right stroke. I'm 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 just I can only speak for my, I can't really speak for no one else's vagina but my own, but the right stroke is like, it is like poetry. It's like um, spoken word. And man, it's just, God bless the penis. It, it's, it's really one of the best things ever made. It's, it keeps me sane, you know, it, it is like poetry. Yeah, I meant that shit. Describe to me the first time you felt the right stroke. Oh, man. Um, I've felt... Okay. I've talked about this 
plenty of times um, on Twitter, but there is a complete difference between the sex that I've had in my 20s versus my 30s. I thought, you know, in my 20s, I was getting my back blown out. I was like, we were like fucking like rabbits. And I wasn't having like a bunch of partners. You know, these were like boyfriends. You know, I was always like the relationship fucker. I just had a lot of sex with those people. (laughs) So, you know, (laughs) we had, you know, we had a lot of uh, good moments until I got into my 30s and realized that, yeah, that sex was decent, but... Something changes in your body, and I think it has everything to do with, you know, as a woman, you know, you your body is saying, okay, this is, this is the time to have kids. It's when you reach your sexual peak, you're more sexually mature. So the nuts that I felt in my 30s versus my 20s are worlds apart. So I've had the best sex of my life. In my 20s, or in my 30s, I've had the most sex in my life in my 20s. Um, there's really no comparison, but, yo, I'm going to tell you something. I was in Miami, this guy, and we, you know, we were in a hotel, and we were chilling. And this is a guy that I have been seeing for a while. He woke me up, and he ate my pussy, and... I cried like <laughs> when I when I came when I came no bullshit I probably hit like a Mariah Carey note I didn't give a fuck who heard me it was like mm-hmm. five o'clock in the morning I had never felt anything like that in my life and then he followed it up with like the most incredible sh- Lord have mercy I'm about to start crying again that shit was it was incredible and I know that. <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to feel that intensity like 10 years ago. So all through my 30s, this the dick has been lit, okay? It's, it's just <laughs> <laughs> like the dick is lit in your 30s. It's just it's just better. It's interesting it's be- that you say that because on August 7, 2016 at 12:16 p.m., you said I know you just made me come 35 times, but I want more. A 34-year-old Nissan Altima driving woman. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) You can't get enough. Look, we, as women, we go through ovulation week, which I know you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. And that is a week before we, the week or so before we get our period, and we're all like, extra horny because that's when our body is like ready to you know like we're ready to make babies so Mm -hmm. when you're in your 30s though you don't have ovulation weeks you have ovulation decades like the shit Shit. lasts every fucking day like you go (laughs) your secretions are different like they're you're just juicy all the time and it's like egg whites and you you're you're horny as fuck like you'll have sex and then You'll chill for like a couple of minutes or a couple of hours. And you just want to hop back on him. And most times, you know, y'all need time to recuperate and, you know, get hard again, juice, get your juices back up. But we're just ready. Like, we're fucking ready. Women in their 30s are ready to fuck all the time. <laughs> all the time. It's just, right. it's crazy. Another one from you. The problem with riding chair is you'll miss out on the sensation of your ass slapping against his balls, the spanking, mm-hmm. etc. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think my previous tweet to that was when I said, um, I don't mind getting older. I just don't want to get arthritis in my knees because I really enjoy riding dick. Yep. And I was going to say that one too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so someone showed me a riding chair. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. But, you know, the fun of riding is just being on the dick and skin to skin contact and just wild and you mind if I wild out real quick? Like you just <laughs> you get on there and you just go for yours and you know with the chair, it's just like It's kind of like that glory hole shit where you ever Uh seen that porn where, you know, they like fucking through walls. Oh, yeah. Glory hole. Glory hole. Yeah. 
And I uh, and now and oh. now people listening is like, damn, he knows. Oh, okay. <laughs> Listen. You know what? Yeah, you know. There's what? a there's a couple there's a couple of you know what? Anyway. <laughs> but. <laughs> but yeah, that's what the chair the chair you know it would it would take away from that you know one of the best things with riding is when you get on him and you know he he slaps your ass and he pulls you towards him and you just you kind of like find each other's rhythm and. You can't do that with a chair. I mean, maybe, maybe you know, if God forbid I get older and my knees fucking fail me or something happens where I can't sit on the deck and ride the man into into the sunset like I normally would, I might need the assistance of a fucking handicap fuck chair or some shit like that. <laughs> but until that happens, I don't plan on using one ever. Okay. All right. Um, here's another one from you from the um from the sage that is Risha <laughs> at Kanye Breast on Twitter. Glaze her face. Yes. Okay. Look, okay, okay. In my defense, the shit is great for your skin. Um, a lot of people don't believe me when I tell them that I'm 35. They think I'm at least like what, maybe 28, 27 or whatever. Um, genetics does have a lot to do with it, but at the same time, I keep my skin clear by, you know, getting a nice facial. It's you know what? They used to sell it. I have a book called The Penis Book. It's okay. a lot of like crazy off the wall facts about dicks. And back in the day, they sold jars like mason jars full of semen and women used that as a face cream and it kept their skin in perfect condition and it's just like chock full of vitamins and the proteins tighten everything so yeah glaze her fucking face wait a and minute. let her just what wait, wait wait a minute they sold jar they sold they sold mason mm-hmm. jars of nut mm-hmm. yes they did they did as, if as i had a, that book with me Go ahead. If I had that book with me right now, I would read. I would like fucking show it to you. But they, you can probably like Google it or look it up. But I promise you, like they used to sell the shit, and women would apply it to their face. It's like a face, uh, like a, a wrinkle cream or some shit. Mm-hmm. All right, I laser got, face. I got one more for you. Let me see. This is this comes from the understanding. Uh, sage that is at Kanye West on Twitter. Some dudes just got to get that anticipation nut out real quick before they proceed to steal your soul. Car keys, money, and your purse. (laughs) (laughs) Am I lying? Am I lying? (laughs) Listen, okay. (laughs) We 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 uh we appreciate your understanding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I get it. Trust me, I get it. If I was a dude and you know I got like I finally got the chick that I wanted in my room and she's down like she's ready. I get to fuck this woman. I get to make love to this woman, bruh. I will probably shoot off in about two strokes. I get it. I, I totally, I totally get it, but you know, it's just, it's just something that, it's just something that happens. I've never experienced someone who didn't come quick but couldn't keep it up so that we can keep going. Mm. You know, some people have to get that first, like that, that anxiety nut out that just um, <laughs> it's like that what anxious. Is- <laughs> yeah, it's the like anxiety shit, nut. You know? It's kind of like when you go to Costco and you're hungry and you know you're going to a restaurant later, but you eat the samples. It's mm-hmm. kind of like that. You just, you just got to take that edge off. I totally get it. And then and then they get that quick nut out and then they can go for like a long time and do amazing things to you. And like I said, steal your soul, your car keys and your purse. <laughs> <laughs> And when you just gonna lay there and just yeah, you in the wet spot, loving it. Is you so uh, your your dick appointment? Is he is he hearing all this right now? Um, he is in another room. I told him that I would 
go somewhere so that I don't disturb him. But uh, yeah, he's getting it later. Mm. Let's 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 disturb him. Put put him. Let's 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 put him on the phone real quick. You want to put him on the phone? Yeah, let's have him on the interview real quick. We not we not okay. going we're not going to um he doesn't have to say his name as far as the interview is concerned he's going to be Reese's dick appointment. Hey babe, come here. <laughs> so I just oh shit. Okay. Come here, Coco. Yeah, my dog that, is you know. She, that that's the start. Of, that's the start yeah, of your she, Snapchat right there. That's my baby. Hold on, Coco. Please. Hey, uh, uh-uh. uh, no, that's enough. That's enough. Come here. Come here. She's a hater. She's a she, cock blocker. She pissed off. Is she? Coco, come here. Yeah, it is too dark for her. Hold on. Okay, so I'm not gonna let him like get on, get on, cause you know. But I'll let him say hi. Say hi. So- Hey, what's up? Hey, what's going on, brother? So wait, I can I can talk to him, right? For a second. Okay. For a second. All right. All right. So yeah, put him back <laughs> off. <laughs> what's what's happening, man? All right. So right now we're doing a, a podcast interview. It's the OTAP show where we're, we're interviewing Risha. So we're going to we're not going to put your real name out there. We're just going to refer to you as Risha's dick appointment. All right, no worries. <laughs> That's actually my government name um, in certain states. <laughs> Reese's dick appointment. So, yeah. so, so, real quick, tell me. I let me see if I want to ask this. Fuck it. Tell me <laughs> your first thought when you realized that you were about to smash Reese. Um, my first thought was just like. All right, nigga, you've been waiting for this shit for a minute. So don't, you know, don't be anything less than like Michael Jordan esque. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that was that that was the first thought. <laughs> okay. 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 And, and and do you do you feel like you delivered? I mean, I think I was I was good enough seeing that I'm talking to you right now. And that you still here, right? He's amazing. You know? <laughs> All right, so 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 so, what are your intentions for Risha when we end this interview? When we end this interview, we're gonna have you know some nice PG thirteen interactions. Um, you know, talk about our life endeavors and our goals. Um, <laughs> you, know, and in, you know, some some light wrestling moves here and there. <laughs> we're going we're going to exchange souls, so. Yeah. So last one. Have you had an opportunity to to ask Risha to return any bits and pieces of your soul that she has already siphoned? Have you tried you know, to get I requested, it back? I requested um, you know, a couple of pieces of my soul back, but she denies, you know, <laughs> any blame in the theft of my soul. I don't think she understands how serious this actually is. <laughs> Um, right. So, you know, I've had no luck in regaining my soul <laughs> in all actuality. It's mine. <laughs> all right, brother. Look, you've been a really good sport, man. I appreciate it. This, this is Reese's dick appointment. <laughs> no doubt, man. Already ain't for short. <laughs> Yo. Um. <laughs> this, is, this, this episode is legendary. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to put this in the description. <laughs> you are so oh, awesome shit. for that. Okay, before I let you, before I get you out of here, because I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna keep let the man keep waiting. He he been a good sport. Um, yeah. Do do you have any questions for me? I know I've been asking a lot of questions. Do you want to ask me anything? How is Pinky? I love her. And what in what way? How is she? What do you mean? She, <laughs> Like how's she doing? Like just how? Oh, she is. She she's doing very very well. She she just got. I think like this is like her second or third promotion. She just had at her job. She is doing really 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 good. Fucking lit. 
She is That's so awesome. Don't don't get me started to talk about her because you know how I feel. Aww. Like she is she is she she's well, that's why I asked you when you said when I said in what way because she's just amazing all the way around. Like that is that's my that's my heart yeah. and soul right there. She's like one of my favorites. Um I haven't met her in person, but she's always been one of my favorites to follow because she's just so fucking her like she's just herself. Like there are certain people that you follow that are they just stick out as their mm-hmm. own being and she is such a boss and I, I absolutely adore her from the outside. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. just give her my love. I will. And yeah, make sure, you know, y'all keep lowering your cholesterol and, and <laughs> shit. All that Listen, like if you think if you think she's hilarious, like on Twitter, she's. Let me tell you what what our day consists of. Um, mm-hmm. If we if we're not having sex, we clown at each other. That's pretty much it. Oh, we I just, love it. All we do is laugh and fuck. That's it. And and That's and occasional so... and occasionally have philosophical discussion. That's beautiful. That's like a beautiful. That's like the perfect union. You got to yeah. be able to love your woman, clown your woman, defend your woman, man, mm-hmm. all that shit. Like that's that's what's up. I'm very happy for the both of y'all. Both Aww. of y'all are very lucky to have each other. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. you. You can't see it, but I'm doing the heart sign with my hands. <laughs> 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 all right, shit, so I'm it, about to do the hard sign with my mouth because you know ow! RDA now. Yes, hello. <laughs> so, all right, any any other questions for me? Um, what's your favorite thing to cook? So I have this. There's this uh, six cheese tortellini alfredo pasta that I Ooh. now now I am going to stop using the. Uh, the snotty Alfredo, as you called it, I'm gonna start making my own. Uh, but what I do is, so the sixth cheese is the uh, is the Parmesan, but I use the Parmesan as a crust. So what I do is I sort of kind of boil the tortellini, uh, and I cook the chicken in with it, and then I bake it. I put mm. the Parmesan on top of it as a crust, and so I bake it so it gets a little hard, just a little bit, and just a little mm. bit, yes. so that you can kind of cut into it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, texture. Mm-hmm. Like I, that is so important in food is texture. You ever do like um, where you take your Parmesan cheese and you bake it so that it's like a uh, like a little disc and it's like crunchy and salty. It's really good on anything that's like soft. Try that, like okay, man. I got I got some I got some recipes coming because tomorrow I was gonna do it today. But you know, dirt came over. Um, <laughs> so t- tomorrow, I'm actually going to do. I'm filming a recipe for YouTube, and I'm making some henny wings. Um, I went out and got like a big ass bottle of Hennessy. So I'm gonna make him like these wings, and probably you know just like some mac and cheese and other shit. So speaking you know, of he- hen- speaking of Hennessy, I just started doing Hennessy motivation facts. You got to small. You got to follow my Snapchat so you can catch those every day. My oh really? Facts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Tell me what. Tell me what your snap is. Uh, I gotta put another one up. The, I mean, another. I didn't do one for today, but it's my 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 same um Twitter name. The Snapchat. The real shitty. The real shitty. Oh, okay. I follow you. Yeah. So you can catch those. So you can catch those daily. Now, when I say Hennessy motivation facts, they are the opposite of what you're seeing with these brags. Uh, apple cider. Just, oh, just, oh shit! They're the opposite of those, but okay, but give, these are. What is? Give, all right, so I'm, let me give, let me give you what I'm gonna give you the first two days. Hold on, okay. let, me, let me find them. Let me tell you. Oh hell! The first day makes today somebody's worst day. <laughs> wow. And the that's, next one, that's some asshole shit. The next one, hug someone and tell them you love them, and then say psych and ask for your hug back. <laughs> See, you need How these. How fucking petty are you? You need this in your life. This is what you need. I do. This is what I you do. need. Follow the Snapchat that's... so you can so you can get the, these daily doses every day. <laughs> I definitely will. 
That's what's um, up. <laughs> any, did you have anything else for me? Um, I don't know. You know what? You know what's fucked up is I'll probably think of something once we get off the phone. Um, not to put just you on make the sure spot. you just just make sure you blow Pinky's back out for me on my behalf and tell her it's, it's love for me. <laughs> and <laughs> this stroke is this stroke is this stroke is from Risha. <laughs> yes, give her give her one good <clears throat> just for me. Just for me. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Lord have mercy. <laughs> All right. So take a moment and plug whatever you got going, websites, places you'll be, anything you want people to know, find you, any of that good stuff. This floor is yours. Okay. You um can get my recipes from carnaldish.com. Let's see. I will be traveling and cooking. So if you see me, say hi. I'm very nice to people that come up to me. Um what else am I doing? If you don't see me like out working, I'm probably on a dick somewhere. So, <laughs> I... <laughs> yeah, I just be chilling. Like I, I eat, I try to have as much sex as possible, and I chill. That's all I do. Eat, chill, and have as much sex as possible. That's what I'm as possible. About. Yeah. That's what's happening. All right, mm-hmm. cool. Follow the show on Twitter at OTAP Show. You can follow me, your host, Corey, on Twitter at The Real Shitty. Uh, search The OTAP Show anywhere you listen to podcasts. If you search it somewhere and you can't find it, let me know and I will get it there. We are now on Google Play Music, uh, Apple, oh, Apple Podcasts. We can be found on SoundCloud. Also, uh, coming up soon, we will be on iHeartRadio. So you can find us there. Oh. Look for us. Yeah, we coming up. Like that's a big one. As soon as that one that's gets pro- dope. approved, as soon as that one gets approved, like yo, like I am super happy about that one. Like that is so much hard work went into I'm that. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, thank you. We are on Tune In. We're on Tune In Radio. Listen, anywhere you listen to podcasts, the OTAPshow.com, anywhere. Go to Google, search the OTAP show. You will find us and listen to the show. O tap and O tap that ass. <laughs> <laughs> what a what a perv. <laughs> I'd like to thank our guests for coming on today. And if you'd like to be a guest on the show, send an email to otap at writeme.com. Follow the conversation on Twitter by searching the hashtag OTAP, that's O T A P, or following us on Twitter at OTAP Show. You can find the show on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Android users can listen to the podcast on Podcast Republic. Just download the app and search OTAP Show. On behalf of our guest, I'm your host, Corey, and I'll see you back here next week on the Air Podcast, starring you. <laughs>